everyone, my name's Michelle and this is my channel Sewing Bunny and thank you for joining me in today's video. Now today's video is a pattern review and um, this is kind of in association with Felicity Fabrics because Felicity Fabrics um, occasionally give me fabric for free in exchange for a review of a pattern, uh, very similar to um, a blog post, but I don't tend to write blogs, so I share it on my YouTube channel. So this fabric was very kindly given to me by Felicity Fabrics and uh, yes, this is my review. So the pattern review that I'm doing is the Nina Lee Southbank sweater. Now I've had this on my plans for quite some time, but uh, finally got round to actually putting it in my plans for October. And this was the first thing that I actually sewed up in October. I could not wait to get this. So um, the fabric that I made it in, I'll go through that first, is a French terry and it has these lovely little birds on them. I need to get it around the right way. There we go. And see there it's got some lovely birds and it is this really kind of like, I want to say it's kind of like a burgundy kind of wine kind of colour. It is coming out quite true to colour there. And you can just see all those beautiful birds and they're sitting on these little flowers. I think they're like little pansy type things. I'm not quite sure. Um, and then this is the reverse. So you can see on there, it is French terry. So we've got all those lovely little loops. And this is a modal um, French terry. So modal is just, and, um, it gives a really soft, um, material um kind of a little bit similar maybe to a viscose so you can probably see here that it is a little bit drapey it does actually have quite a fair amount of drape and you can see that movement in there if you were to compare that to maybe a standard french terry i would say a standard french terry could be maybe slightly stiffer but it is lovely and it is just so incredibly soft. So this is why I wanted to have it for the Nina Lee Southbank sweater. And uh, Felicity Fabrics do have this in two colourways. They've got this lovely red version, which is uh, brand new to the shop. And they do have a lovely grey colour as well. Because initially, when I contacted Felicity Fabrics, obviously to give them my selection from the website of the, what I wanted, um, I initially asked for the grey and then the lovely ladies actually said, oh, do you know, I'll let you in on a, on a little secret. We do actually have some red colourway coming and I was like, oh, can I see it? And they showed me a picture. I was like, yes, I want this one because I just think this is so lovely, so autumnal. It will be perfect for the weather we're having now and also kind of looks a little bit Christmassy, maybe. So yeah, that is why I picked this fabric. <laughs> so let's get on to the actual pattern. So you can see on here, it is more or less just like a um, kind of a loose fitted jumper dress. And if I turn it round, you can see there are different variations. So you can do kind of like a real cropped length jumper. You can do kind of like your standard kind of um, hip level, or you can make it into a dress and then you can have this bottom band on. So this is the one that I went for, uh, which is the one on the cover. So you can see on there, you've got um, a funnel neck. You've also got some cuffs. And again, you've got this lovely bottom band. So the first thing I thought of when I saw this was, oh, I don't actually need to get my sewing machine out and I can do it all on the overlocker. I love patterns where I can just get one machine out and that's it. Because yeah, I'm not sure, you may have seen from some of my sew alongs, I have to kind of swap my machines kind of on my table. I don't really have um, like room where I can kind of sit and move along. I have to kind of take each one out. So just having one machine was lovely and the overlocker is so quick and easy. So this was a really quick and easy make. Now for the uh, measurements, this comes in a variety of sizes from sizes 6 to 20. And what I'll do is I will just give you those measurements. So a size 6, um, the bust is 32 inches, the waist is 24 and the hip is 33.5. And then the largest size that it goes up to is a size 20, and that bust is 46, 
the waist is 38 and the hip is 47.5. So that is currently the size range um, of this pattern. And then it does give you the um, fabric requirements as well. So it all depends um, kind of what uh, size fabric you've got. So you've got everything here from, you know, a 150 centimeter, 115 centimeter, and then you can see along here how much fabric you need. So I was looking and seeing what size did I fall in? And I actually fell into kind of um, two sizes. So, my measurements, I'm a 36 bust, I'm a 30 waist and I'm a 40 inch hip. And I was looking, so first off, I always look at the bust measurements because that's the one that I tend to find is probably the best one to look for, for fit. And that would put me as a size 10 for a 36. But then I've got the waist, which says it's a 28 and then the hip, which is 37 and a half. And um, yeah, that was, oh, I just wasn't sure about that because I was like, mm, that's not really my size. So I think maybe I needed to size up. And what I did is I actually had a look at the size 12 and that goes to a 30 waist and then a 36, uh, sorry, 39 um, hip. So I thought, yeah, that's probably a little bit better. Now you do have finished measurements here as well. And um, on here, you can see that for a size 10, even with the finished measurements, I still wouldn't have got to a 40 hip and I didn't want it to kind of stretch over. I mean, yes, because it is a jersey, you do have negative ease on there, but I didn't want it to be too stretchy. You know, that's kind of a little bit too much, I think, for me to stretch over. So I went up to the size 12, which is 40 and a half. So that kind of meant that that would fit me quite well. So what I did, I did a size 10 um, on the top and then I graded out to the size 12 at the waist to then go through my waist and over my hip. And that is very easily done on this pattern because what I did is you get um, on the pattern pieces, you get uh, kind of like where your waist is. And so all I did is I did a size 10 up here. And then as soon as I got kind of around this kind of area, I then graded out to the size 12. So I really hope that kind of makes sense. It's a very easy pattern to grade between the sizes. And because it is kind of a little bit kind of loose kind of fit, I don't think you have to be ridiculously accurate. Um, I think, you know, if you don't get it spot on, it's not gonna make a massive difference. But I just kind of drew a line in between um, that was kind of, you know, very gradual kind of curve and I was absolutely fine. So yeah, that's the size that I picked. Now, as I'm talking about kind of grading between sizes and any adjustments that I made on this, I did also make another adjustment, which was to actually lengthen the dress because I don't know about you guys but what I tend to do before I make a pattern I tend to go on Instagram and I look up the hashtag so I looked up the Nina Lee Southbank um, sweater hashtag and I saw lots and lots of variations I, I love everyone's kind of ones they've done it's so lovely to look at a pattern and how many people kind of interpret it in different ways with different fabrics and things and um, one thing I did notice is that it was reasonably short. Now, normally I don't mind because, yeah, I would wear this with tights or leggings. I'm wearing it with leggings today, as you'll see from some of the pictures that I'll put in a little bit later. Um, but yeah, I kind of just thought, I don't know kind of if I'd want it that short. I, I do kind of like, you know, like dresses and skirts to kind of hit me nearer the knee than kind of at the thigh. So I did actually extend this by two and a half inches. And I just did that by um, adding that straight on the bottom here before I added the cuff. So I just added two and a half inches from the main bodice piece um, and then still added on the standard cuff and the length on me is absolutely perfect. I've worn this dress out and about quite a few times now, and it is just the perfect length for me. 
I am five foot eight, so I don't know if this pattern is drafted for um, any height in particular. I think it might be drafted for maybe about five, six, I think. I can't remember, it might say in the instructions. Yeah, it doesn't say anywhere in the instructions what height it is drafted for, but I think most patterns are kind of around about five, six, I think. So yeah, I think adding that two and a half inches was just perfect for me. So because I lengthened the dress slightly, um, I wasn't quite sure how my fabric kind of sizing would go, but yeah, it was absolutely fine. I had two meters of this lovely fabric and um, this is basically what I've got left. So just some scraps, maybe I can, I don't know, maybe make some uh, sleeves for something or maybe some undies or something. I'm sure I can use something for that. Um, so yeah, I would recommend two meters if you're making a similar size for me. But as I say, they're all um, on the back of the recommendations and I think they are pretty spot on. So I think, yeah, that is good. Now the instructions for the South Bank are really, really nice. They are um, illustrations here and each step is very clearly labeled. It's very, very easy to follow didn't get stuck at any point on there. It was just a really, really nice sew. Um, something that I do like is that they did say to stabilize the shoulders and they recommend either using some stay tape or some ribbon. And I've actually got some of that clear elastic, which I think is just up there. So yes, I just used some of this stuff, which is the clear elastic. So nice and stretchy. Um, I will be perfectly honest, I can't remember where I got this clear elastic from. Um, but all I know is that it is um, kind of the slightly more expensive clear elastic. If you're going to buy clear elastic, you want to get decent clear elastic because beforehand I used to buy the really cheap stuff and you would stretch it and then it would just literally snap. Um, which you don't want um, in your shoulders there. But this stuff is really, really stretchy. Um, I think it might be like kind of swimming elastic, I think it might be called. But yeah, this stuff is brilliant. Um, I wish I could remember where I got it from, but uh, if I do remember, I will pop it um, in the description box below. Um, but otherwise, yeah, sorry guys, I'll just have to tell you just to look out for the decent stuff. <laughs> so... What you do is you just line it up across the shoulder seam and then you um, sew along. I just lined it up um, and fed it through my overlocker with the seam. But what you can do is you can sew it on with your sewing machine first and then overlock if you like, because yeah, it can move about a bit, but I was fine. I just made sure that I cut a length that was a lot longer so that I had enough to grip at one end to then guide it through the overlocker. So I hope that makes sense. But I do like patterns when they do tell you to stabilize those shoulders because it just makes sure that nothing stretches out. You can probably see on here that it is a slight dropped shoulder design, if you can see there. So normally my natural shoulder bit would be here, but it has dropped down slightly, which is really nice. It gives a quite a casual look. Um, but yeah, I think having those shoulders stabilised really does make the difference. Also, as part of the instructions, I really love how they've put everything together. You basically leave all of the um, cuffs, so all of these bits until last. So you basically create all of the dress. Um, so then you can, you know, try it on if you want um, to see how it fits. You can, you can make your adjustments on your sides or your underarms, things like that, before you put on any of the cuffs, which I think is brilliant. Um, and yeah, just adding the cuffs on is really straightforward, really, really nice. The only thing I would say is if you've got a directional print, just be a little bit careful when you are attaching your cuffs that everything is the same direction because that can get a little bit confusing sometimes. So it's just good to, before you actually sew anything up, just have a little test run, you know, where you're placing it kind of where you need to and just checking, you know, kind of fold it out maybe whilst it's pinned just to check that everything is the same direction. Because I have done that before where I've put on like neck bands or cuffs and things like that where I haven't checked the direction. 
Um, so if you don't have a directional print, it's fine, it doesn't matter. But yeah, if you've got things like what I have, like with the little birds and things, you don't want any upside down birds. So uh, yeah, just double check that. Now, one thing um, I didn't actually mention when I was talking about adjustments is the pattern does call for pockets, which you can add. But I didn't add the pockets um, in this dress. And that is because, as I was saying before, I always look up on Instagram to see kind of what other people have done with the pattern. And I did actually kind of find a lot of people said that the pockets were quite bulky on this pattern. Now, that could just be, you know, depending on your fabric type that you've used. But where the more I was kind of looking on Instagram, the more I was kind of thinking, I just don't know if I want those pockets. I mean, I love pockets in a dress. I mean, who doesn't? But I was just kind of thinking, I think for me, I think I was going to leave those out. So just my personal opinion, up to you if you want to add the pockets. But I do agree with some people. I think they do look a little bit bulky. And because this fabric um, was quite kind of uh, drapey for a French terry, I didn't want to have to drag anything down or anything like that. So I didn't do the pockets. Now, the only other thing I do have to say when I finished this dress, the funnel neck, if I undo there, you can see on here, this is how it sits. And um, it's lovely, it's really, really nice. But I kind of find with this particular fabric, it is kind of a little bit, it kind of flops a little bit. I think if I'm gonna have a funnel neck, I'd rather it, you know, kind of be up and proud and actually stay like this. But, you know, as I was kind of moving around, it just kind of was moving a little bit and wasn't for me. So I decided just to, as I'm wearing it, I'll just kind of fold it in half the whole way around. And then I personally find that that gives a really nice finish. And that's kind of how I have been wearing it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up the camera slightly differently so you can then see a full head to toe and I'll give you some little twirls. <laughs> Okay, so I'm at a slightly <laughs> weird angle here so that I can um, show you a full length, but just a couple of little close-ups. So this is the neckband. So as I say, um, this is what it would be like normally, which is a lovely funnel neck. But yeah, this for me is just a little bit floppy. So I just halve that all the way around like so and then that sits a lot better just for me. And then, so here are the cuffs. So this is what I mean about making sure that your um, pattern placement is right so that everything kind of lines up. I don't know if there's another one on here. There we go. So you can see the birds are that way. So everything is all lined up lovely. And then if I step back, then hopefully, sorry if I've cut off my head, <laughs> when you're limited to space, <laughs> it's a bit difficult, but I'm hoping this will kind of show you the length. So I'm wearing it with some leggings. So you can see here, this is what I like. I like it just to sit just above the knee. Um, if it was two and a half inches shorter, then yeah, it would sit a little bit high up for my liking, but that is just my personal uh, preference. So it's got this lovely bottom band as well, which kind of brings it just a little bit in at the bottom. So I feel really secure when I'm walking around. It's not going to kind of wriggle up or anything like that. It fits really, really nicely. It does have a very gentle curve at the waist. And um, as I did grade it out a little bit as well, you can see that I have got enough room around the hips, which is lovely. I don't think I would have liked it to be any tighter than what it is around the hips. And around the waist, I have got lots of room, but I don't mind that at all. And what I can do sometimes on here is I can team it up with a belt. So if I get to my little belt here, I've just got this little gold stretchy belt that I tend to wear quite a lot with um, a lot of my outfits. And if I was just to pop that on, you could see it gives quite a nice little look if you want it belted as well. So um, yeah, I think you can do quite a lot with it. Maybe a kind of nice thick uh, black belt would look quite nice. Obviously teamed up with the tights as well. So overall, I really, really like this pattern. The arm length as well, 
for me is so good because I do struggle because I'm a bit taller um, I have quite long arms and usually with patterns they kind of basically finish around it like kind of bracelet length this is absolutely perfect I can even do the whole kind of oh I'm a bit cold and I can like you know pull it up over my hands which I love I know it's not good because it stretches these things out but that's what I do. <laughs> so yeah, overall, this is just such a lovely, warm, snuggly jumper dress. And I think I'm going to get so much wear out of it. So yeah, I really hope that kind of um, shows you a little bit of a better angle there. Um, so now I'm going to take off the um, awkwardness of this and sit back down. <laughs> Okay, so I think that's kind of roughly where you were before. Um, so yeah, my overall thoughts of this pattern. I love it. This is not gonna be my last one. <laughs> I want to make so many. I wanna make it in all the cozy fabrics. <laughs> um, it's just a really straightforward make. I think if you're um, maybe a reasonably new kind of uh, sewist, you know, beginner, then this would be lovely. If you haven't worked with knits before, then again, this would be lovely. I used everything on the overlocker. It does not mean that you need an overlocker to make this pattern. The instructions talk about overlocking, but it also does talk about zigzagging as well. So as long as your sewing machine has a zigzag stitch, you will be fine. You do not even need an overlocker for this pattern. However, if you do have an overlocker, a lot easier <laughs> um so yeah it's a lovely pattern and i'm gonna make so many more of these this is not gonna be my last one i'm just constantly now looking at all like the sweatshirtings and the french terries and all that i could make it's such a nice pattern i think nina's done a really good job on this because it is so cozy <laughs> but yeah overall I love the pattern. <laughs> so I hope that was helpful in case you were kind of maybe thinking about um, making that pattern or if you have made that pattern, what do you think? Do you like it? <laughs> I'd love to know. And uh, yes, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be amazing. And if you haven't subscribed already, then it would be amazing if you could. Okay, thank you very much. I will speak to you in my next video. Bye.